Okie dokie, folks. It is lesson one of unit nine. It's the last unit of study in AP Calculus BC. And we use this to remind ourselves if we've studied them already or teach ourselves if we haven't what parametric functions are and how we use them. Now, what do I mean by a parametric function? A parametric function is one that is described in terms of some parameter t. X and Y are both expressed in terms of the parameter t. So instead of a domain of x values or a domain of y values, you usually get a domain of t values. And if you took some nice pre-calculus course, you probably did something where you turned your calculator on and you put it into parametric mode and then you hit the Y equals button and there wasn't just a Y equals, there was an X equals and a Y equals. And so you typed cosine of T and then sine of t, that's what lights up the function because you need an x and a y. And so then you hit your window and you say, well, I need my t values to go from 0 to 2 pi, but that's what I've got. And we'll take a look at the standard window, and I hit the graph button, and it's very hard to see anything. So maybe I'll, I know that cosine, th to cosine of t is always between negative 1 and 1. Sine of t is between negative 1 and 1. So maybe if I, oh really, if I bring my window into better alignment with that, well, now I'm thinking, well, that's some roundish type thing. And so I think, well, let's square the window to make sure that that's true. And sure enough, it is. So I'm going to take a picture because it lasts longer. There it is. Welcome to the screen. Yes, very good. Uh, this thing. This thing appears to be a circle. It appears to be... Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. This thing appears to be a circle. And you can tell that if you hit the trace button. Uh, we start out at 1, 0, because cosine of 0 is 1 and sine of 0 is 0. And we work our way around. You can see t is going up, and our itsy-bitsy spider is marching all the way around until we get to time equals 2 pi. So what we've got is a circle. Now, of course, you knew that it was a circle because you know that for all values of t, cosine squared t plus sine squared t is 1. And cosine squared t, that's just x squared. Sine squared t, that's just y squared. I've got a circle centered at the origin, radius 1. Now, if I wanted a circle centered at the origin, with radius, I don't know, 3, I could probably just throw a 3 here and a 3 there and be okay. You may want to try that in the privacy of your own home. It may end up working out nicely for you. Um, exemple 2. What happens if there are numbers in front? We'll call those coefficients. Ready? 1, 2, 3, coefficients. And we'll go from 0 to 4 pi, because why not? So what happens? Well, that's a 4. That's a, oh, really? That's a 3. And we're going to set our window so that we're going to 4 pi. Boom. Boom! Well, that's, that's too big to see. Let's use the standard viewing window. It appears to be some elliptical type thing. Now, I'll give you just a moment to take a look at this picture and ask yourself, how did I know that it was going to be an ellipse type thing? I'll let that sink in ever so briefly. Um, the side note of some importance here, if you trace, oh really, if you trace, 0 to 2 pi takes you all around the mulberry bush once. 0 to 2 pi gets you to right here. 
And then 2 pi to 4 pi, oh mercy, 0 to 4 pi takes you all the way around twice. So 0 to 2 pi takes you la 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 And then 2 pi to 4 pi just goes right back around. So if you were to, since the period of the functions, cosine t and sine t, are 2 pi, you give me any 2 pi window, and I go once around the curve. I hope that makes sense. Excellent. Let's let x equal 3t plus 1, and y equal... 5t minus 2 on, I don't know, 0 to 4. Time values from 0 to 4. What's that look like? 3t plus 1, 5t minus 2 on 0 to 4. Maybe we'll count up by 1s. Huh. Huh. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Huh. It's like a line segment. I wonder why it looks like a line segment. Well, when time equals zero, where are we? When time equals zero, the x coordinates one and the y coordinates negative two. We're here. And then when time equals 4, we're at 13, 18. We're here. And it appears that it's just a straight line segment connecting those. I wonder if we can prove that. So, go ahead, solve for t. No, don't solve for t there. Go ahead, solve for t. If you solve for t you get x minus 1 over 3. Now take that time and plug in. Oh, I think you know where this is going. This is 5 thirds x minus 5 thirds minus another 2. And so the green line segment over on the right is a piece of the line y equals 5 thirds x minus 11 thirds. It really is. It really works. It really works. Um, incidentally, and I'll throw this in as a quick side note, la, that's a 5 thirds, that's a 5, that's a thirds. It's probably no connection there. It's probably just a random thing. I'll let that sink in. Of course, this is a calculus class. Nobody gives a rip about how to graph the stinking things in a calculus class. They give a rip. Slopes! Because all that matters in a calculus class are slopes. And so let's talk a little bit about how that works. For reasons that are intuitively obvious but hard to prove with rigor in a course like ours, the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of y with respect to t divided by the derivative of x with respect to t. It is hard in a course at our level to come up with rigor as to why this is true. But if you take dy dt and divide by dx dt, you get the slope of the tangent line to the curve at any given point. As a secondary notion, the second derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of y prime with respect to t over dx dt. This is dy dx. This is the derivative of dy dx with respect to time. It is the derivative of the thing on the top line of the screen with respect to time. I'll demonstrate with a couple of examples just so we have some kind of idea. 
find dy dx and the second derivative of y with respect to x at t equals pi over 3 for the curve where x is a half tan t and y is a half secant t. That should be fun. Two things to find. First, we'll find the derivative of y with respect to x. And the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of y with respect to t. That's the derivative of 1 half secant t divided by the derivative of x with respect to t. That's the derivative of 1 half tan t. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Then all we need is a little bit of trigonometry. Uh, that's sine over cosine over 1 over cosine. That is sine t. That is, hello, yes, hello. That is sine t, and we are going to evaluate that at pi over 3, and so we get radical 3 over 2. If I'm interested in the second derivative, the second derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of this thing with respect to time divided by the dx dt that we had from before. This, without too much playing around, is 2 cosine cubed t. We evaluate that at pi over 3, and we get 1 fourth. So dy dx, very easy to find. Second derivative with respect to x, not that much harder to find. One more before we're done. Find horizontal and vertical tangents to the curve where x is negative cosine t and y is cosine squared t. Horizontal and vertical tangents. Horizontal tangents are places where dy dt is 0, and dx dt is not. And I hope that that makes sense. You need a fraction whose slope... It, no, let me try that again. You need a slope of 0, so you need a fraction whose numerator is 0, but whose denominator is not 0. dy dt has to be 0, but dx dt cannot be 0. So dy dt has to be 0, but dx dt cannot be 0, which means that this factor is not 0, which means this factor is, and assuming we're graphing on 0 to 2 pi, that's pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Now, those are time values. If I want the actual horizontal tangents, I'm looking for equations of horizontal lines. That's y values. So the y value at each of those is 0. Go the other way. Vertical tangents. Vertical tangents are places where dx dt is 0 and dy dt is not 0. So I'm looking for sine t to equal, negative sine t to equal 0 and 2 cosine t sine t not to be 0, but that never happens. There are no vertical tangents. Okay? Okay. I've got to leave you with a little something to think about. I want you to make sure that you can do first and second derivatives at time equals 2 for the curve with the equation x equals 1 plus 1 over t squared and y equals 1 minus 3 over t. 
So that's a nice little on your own question to think about. We will pick up tomorrow. It will be good.